Hey, today I want us to talk about uh, this, the, the, latter, um, the, the latter third of 1 Corinthians 13. It's a um, great passage, right? You've heard me recite, you know, the first three verses are about intentional uh, self-examination. You know, if I speak in tongues, if I have the gift of knowledge, if I give all I possess, all those things without love are nothing. Um, that requires some deeper dive into self-examination. The second thing was self-discipline is that I can't I can't begin to differentiate between the attractions of love and the distractions of love if I don't take some time to say, hey, these things are, are take away, they're distractions. They take away from love uh, because love is not envy. It doesn't boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. Right? I, I begin to kind of recognize those when I commit that to memory, which I'm encouraging everyone to do, all of a sudden now you've got this this um, ability to on the fly recognize, ah, that was envy. I can name the distraction that is pulling me away from living and loving like Jesus. And then I can see the attractions. Love is patient. Love is kind. Those are the two pillars to love. And then he kind of gives the whole, all eight distractions. Then he comes back and finishes out with seven more attractions um, to love. Eight and eight. Beautiful. Okay, then we get to verse 8. He says, it finishes up, you know, uh, the, in fact, the uh, Passion Translation says, love never stops loving. And said, love never, instead of love never fails, love never stops loving. Where there are prophecies, they will cease. Now, I want you to recognize something here. 8 and 9 reflect verse 1 and 2. Remember 1 and 2? If I speak in the tongues, if I have the gift of prophecy, uh, knowledge, Right, he talks about spiritual gifts. He's coming after the chapter, chapter 12 about Corinthians is all about spiritual gifts. And oftentimes, here's the distraction. We get distracted because we love great gifts. We love super talent. We love lots of, you know, charisma. We love those things. We love those things. I mean, that's what, that's what Hollywood is built off of. That's what the movies are all about. That's what the Olympics are all about. Superstars, people with amazing gifts and amazing talents. And how often have you, over the course of your life, been distracted by those things? Maybe desiring to be that, wishing you were that. If only, if only, if only. And then what happens when you're not? Your desired or craved identity is, is run through the ringer um, because you finally realize, I'm not, and I'm not going to be like that. We have a love for talents and gifts that distract us. On one hand, it can be an okay medium for entertainment, but when it becomes obsession because we want to be like them or you're only valuable if you're like them, we begin to, we begin to give value of personhood to people with incredible talent. That's a distraction. Why? Because it causes me to look past people that are average, that are below average, that are broken, that are unattractive, that are unlovely. Uh, because only now do I prize and esteem that which is gifted, talented, beautiful. That's a distraction. Why? Because Jesus came for the unlovely. He came for the broken. He came for those that have no talent. You see, part of what the church does is love unloveliness to bring it to the lovely character of God and watch God transform us. Today, I want to, I want to challenge you. When he says um, in verse 8, listen to, the, listen to the remainder of this passage, um, um, Love never fails. Where, where there is prophecy, it will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Where is tongues, they will cease. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. What's the perfection? The perfection is the object of the text. The object of love is Jesus. He's the one who loves like that. He wants to love like that through me. He's, he wants me to love more like that. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect disappears. 
Jesus is the, Scripture says, the perfect Lamb of God, the only one who was without sin that never did anything wrong. Jesus is the perfect one. And one day he will come. And when I have um, intentional about the big picture, I'm able to kind of put talent in the right perspective, giftedness in the right perspective. Giftedness is great, but giftedness does not make me like Jesus. Only love does that. Lord God, we pray that you help us to be people that are not distracted, entertained, but not distracted by talent and gifts. Lord, help us to appreciate, but not idolize. Lord, let us embrace your perfect love that gives us perfect vision of how we see the big picture and why we do what we do. In Jesus' name, I'll see you tomorrow.